Welcome to another episode of No Nonsense Cigar Reviews. My name is James Wiedenbeck from the Tinderbox in Buffalo, New York, and I've got a review for you today of the Herman's Batch by H. Upman. This is the Toro size that I have in my hand here, and this is my favorite size of this blend. Now, before I go any further, if there's anybody from Altadas USA, that the makers of this cigar, that are watching me, what are you doing with your cellophane? You guys changed it on a bunch of your cigars back about a year ago or so. And this new cellophane, it's just, it's flimsy. It's thin. It feels cheap. Change it back to what it was. Also, the, the barcodes that you guys are using, half the time, can't be read by our point of sale scanner because they are either so dark or so misprinted that they can't be read. Uh, it, these things sometimes look like they're, they're, they're being printed by a home inkjet, uh, inkjet printer. Get a better printer. It, you, you, you're, you're one of the big boys. You, you can afford a, a decent printer. I, I hate having to punch in these, these, all these numbers into the point of sale system. Get a better printer and, and change the cellophane back. What are you doing? It just feels cheap. All right. Sorry you had to deal with that. This cigar, the Herman's Batch. This cigar pays homage to the founder of Age Upman, Herman Upman. Herman Upman was a German banker who traveled to Cuba. He then invested in a cigar company in Cuba. That's how the brand came to be, H. Upman. Now, that happened in 1844. So, this is one of the cigars that came out to celebrate H. Upman's 175th anniversary as a brand. The company did business from 1844 through 1922. 1922, H. Upman went bankrupt. Yeah, it happens to the best of us. Well, the brand was purchased by Menendez y Garcia, the same company that owned Monte Cristo. And started making the cigars under their company. Now, they did that all the way up to the Cuban Revolution. Cuban Revolution happened and we all know what happened. Cuba decided to nationalize everything. Anybody that could get out got the heck out. And the Menendez y Garcia company was no exception to that. They took off, landed first in the Canary Islands, and then eventually in the Dominican Republic. And that's where you see the cigars made today, in the Dominican. Altadas USA owns the brand uh, H. Upman. They also own Monte Cristo, by the way. So that's the abbreviated story of the brand. Now, what is the cigar? Ecuadorian Habano wrapper. The binder is Dominican and the filler is Dominican and Nicaraguan. And as far as flavor notes go, you get a little bit of pepper. It's not overwhelming, just enough to let you know it's there. Uh, you get cocoa in this thing pretty much right off the bat and it, it kind of stays through through the whole thing. You get some earthiness that, that kind of comes and goes. It's more prevalent in the last third, but it, it is there through the whole cigar, just not as in your face. Uh, there, there is some, some natural sweetness to this and I've yet to determine whether it's coming from the filler tobacco or it's just sweet on, on the palate from the wrapper. I, I can't tell, I'm, I'm not good enough at this stuff. But there is some natural sweetness to this. Strength, it's medium. It's, let me show you the cigar. The cigar looks darker than what it is. It looks like a medium to full bodied cigar if you're going by Whoa, that's dark. It must be strong. It's not. It's, it's a medium strength cigar. Don't let the fact that it's a little dark scare you. It's, it's not full. It's not heavy. It, it is medium. It is, I would say, fuller flavor. 
Uh, it, it, it does have some of those, those heavier flavor characteristics like the, uh, the, the earthiness and the cocoa, but it's not a, a, a heavy, strong cigar. This is not the first one of these that I have had. Far from it. I've smoked a bunch of these. It, normally, the, the H. Upman's, like the Vintage Cameroon and, and some of the others, I, I don't pick them to smoke very often. Uh, I, I, I do smoke them so I can stay familiar, but it, it's not one of those cigars that I'm going to grab and say, hey, I really want to smoke this today. The, the brand has, it's always kind of fallen flat for me. I, I, I don't, they're, they're not my favorites. Now, when the Banker came out, that one blew my socks off. The, the Banker by H. Upman, excellent cigar. If you haven't had it, definitely give it a try. The Herman's Batch, after this was released, this runs a very close second to me on the Banker. It, it, it's a, a fuller flavor cigar while still being medium strength. It, it just, it ticks a lot of boxes for me. So if you haven't tried one yet, pick one up. If, especially if you like the banker, if you smoke the banker and you enjoy it, try one of these. The only complaint, and, and I hate to even mention it, is because this is not the first one that I've had that does this. It, it, it's not as easy of a draw as I would like. It's, it's just a, a, a little bit hard. Sometimes you got to work for something good. I, I, I get that. It, this is one of those cigars that it, it takes a little bit more to puff on it. And I'm okay with that because it does taste so good. But if that's one complaint that I, I have, it's that these tend to be a little bit of a tighter draw than some of the other cigars that, uh, that I've smoked. So with that being said, give one of these a shot. Give me a thumbs up on the review if you like it. Click the subscribe button if you haven't already, and I will see you in the next review.